Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about water. Specifically, the water that's not on Earth, on other objects and other worlds in our solar system. Let's find out where else we can actually find quite a lot of liquid water, and let's find out how Earth compares to those objects as well. Welcome to What The Math. So water is something that uh, makes Earth kind of special, specifically liquid water, but that doesn't mean that this is the only world in our solar system where we can actually find liquid water. Uh, possibly two or three decades ago, we actually thought that water was relatively rare um, in our solar system, and then we realized we were completely wrong. Pretty much every single object in our solar system, every single planet, and for the most part every single moon has at least some water. Even Jupiter has water. Even Saturn. Neptune is full of water. So is Uranus. Now, today we're actually going to be discussing uh, some of the more solid objects, such as, for example, planets, dwarf planets and moons, where we can potentially land and explore um, the world, uh, where there is actually quite a lot of water. As a matter of fact, more than on Earth. Now, in order for us to actually investigate how much water uh, there is on other worlds in our solar system, we're going to just take Earth, Moon that you can see passing in front of Earth, and the Sun, and just kind of place a bunch of uh, satellites around our planet Earth. And to basically uh, do this, I'm going to just randomly add a few asteroids and change their size. But this will be done just so you can see the size comparison between various objects in our solar system, the amount of water on them, and also the water total amount of water on Earth. And let's actually start with this. Let's put the Earth water as a basically as a as a moon as a separate moon of Earth. And here we're just going to call it water. And we're going to um, change all of this into water and essentially create the ball that's going to represent the size of water on Earth. And here, the water radius is approximately 690 kilometers in radius, which means that it's about a mass of 1.8 times 10 uh, to the power of 21, 21st power. And basically, this is what um, total mass of water, total ball of water would look like if you were to place it outside of Earth right next to it. And as a matter of fact, uh, the water bowl is actually even bigger than Ceres, it seems, which is uh, very surprising in a sense because Ceres, when we think of it, seems like a big object, but if you were to take all water away from Earth, it's actually losing a lot of mass right now because it's being evaporated, um, but if, if, you were, if you were to place water right here, um, Ceres would actually be a little bit smaller. Anyway, so that's uh, water on Earth, and let's actually investigate some of the other objects. Now, there are actually six other uh, objects in our solar system that could be considered to be water worlds, or basically objects we can actually walk on and potentially even live on, that have uh, more water than Earth. The uh, majority of them are actually moons, and some of them are objects by themselves, like, for example, Pluto. So here we're going to start with the first one that has slightly more water than Earth, and that's uh, the satellite of Jupiter known as Europa. Now here uh, we can actually find Europa right here. This is what Europa looks like compared to our own water. Here's what Europa looks like compared to Earth. It's a lot smaller. But if you were to place uh, only the water of Europa right next to our water, it would actually be slightly bigger. And the total mass of water on Europa is about uh, nine times, or approximately nine times uh, more than water on Earth. But in case of Europa, a lot of this water is actually just in ice format. It's not necessarily liquid. But nevertheless, by mass, it's a lot more, and it, it creates a much larger bowl as well. So that's the first one. Second one is actually the infamous Pluto, the dwarf planet known as Pluto. And here, if I were to actually look at uh, what it's going to create, I would need to change its radius to approximately 1,010 kilometers. Uh, so it's about uh, 200 kilometers more in radius than um, Europa. And in comparison to Pluto itself, this is actually what it looks like. As a matter of fact, there's barely any difference. This kind of suggests that for the most part, Pluto is just all big water. It's all uh, it's a big water bowl. If you were to melt it or if you were to move it closer to the sun, it would just first become liquid and then evaporate completely. Uh, and there would be some rock left, but not, not a lot. Uh, 
then we have Triton. Triton is yet another satellite, and uh, in this case, it is going to be um, a ball that's about 1,170 kilometers in size. Uh, in terms of mass, it compared to Earth at least, this is 8.5 times 10 to the power of 21. And so the Triton ball is approximately um, 150, 160 kilometers bigger than the ball around Pluto. Uh, and it's already a pretty sizable object by itself. And if we were to actually compel, compare it to the actual moon called Triton, uh, it's once again not much bigger than, than the water on it, suggesting that just like Pluto, it has quite a large uh, mass of water in comparison to everything else. Next on the list is yet another moon of Jupiter, and this time it's the moon known as Callisto. And here, where this is where things get really, really, really big. The actual radius of Callisto water would be about 1,800 kilometers. It is huge. As a matter of fact, as you can see, it even created its own atmosphere. Uh, mostly because I didn't really remove any parameters from it. But in this case, it's essentially a moon by itself. It's, it's a large, large world. 1800 kilometers is really, really big. Uh, it's bigger than Pluto, it's bigger than all of those other objects I previously showed you. Uh, and uh, compared to actual Callisto, uh, let's just actually find it somewhere right here. Uh, this is what it, the size is. So it's still a little bit smaller, not by much, but smaller nevertheless. And uh, compared to our own moon, it's practically the same size. So Callisto water is essentially the size of our own moon. Then we have another world that has even more water. Not, not by much, but a little bit. This is the infamous Titan. Titan, if we were to actually create uh, just a Titan water world, it would be about 1890 uh, kilometers in radius. So just a little bit uh, bigger than, than the water of um, Callisto. But uh, compared to Titan itself, it's actually uh, significantly uh, large in Callisto, so it, it, it does kind of give you an idea that Titan has other stuff inside. A lot of it is water, but not not everything. Um, and the last on the list, and you may have guessed what it is, is actually the biggest moon in our solar system, Ganymede. Now, Ganymede's bowl would be significantly larger again. It would be approximately 2,350 kilometers in radius. It is actually larger than our own moon. The amount of water that is present on Ganymede is ridiculous. Ganymede itself is only just a little bit bigger, actually. Uh, it's just a tiny bit bigger than, than the water present on, on it. And most of the water in, on Ganymede um, is inside its core and basically is a mixture of uh, water and rock, uh, various elements, and of course um, ice water, but a lot of it is in a liquid format. Now, we don't exactly know what actually uh, is responsible for Ganymede's unusual properties, but one of the properties is that it actually has a magnetic field. It's the only moon we know of that has a magnetic field. And because of this, uh, we suspect that maybe somehow it's actually created by the salt water inside or possibly something else that creates these unusual um, magnetic effects. We have no idea what's making it happen, but for all we know, it could be uh, the conductive water inside uh, inside the moon Ganymede. Now, for the most part, this is actually what these worlds look like. This is the comparison uh, of these water bowls to our Earth. And so here, obviously, the first one is Ganymede. Then we have Titan and so on. And so it's, it's actually a tremendous amount of water when you think about it. So our own Earth is... That's not Earth. Our own Earth only has about this much water. So this is Earth water, and this is what we have on other objects. So being seventh on the list uh, does mean that this is, despite the fact that we have liquid water on the surface, is not the only world where we can find plenty of this liquid. Uh, now, interestingly, for the longest time, we actually thought that water was more rare, but today we know that it is practically everywhere, everywhere in the universe, or at least in our galaxy. So water is not as rare as we thought it was, and uh, this basically creates an opportunity for us to become interstellar explorers, because water is essential to our survival, and if we can find it anywhere, this means that we can actually survive pretty much everywhere as well. Now, before we finish this video, let's actually see what happens if all of this water crashes onto our planet Earth. And let's find out what would actually become of our planet and also 
what the planet would look like if all of this water suddenly came to our, a beautiful planet. Uh, now, there's already stuff falling on the surface. I don't actually know what it is. I think it's the leftovers from the previous world I had uh, orbiting Earth. But you can kind of see that uh, some of the water is being evaporated. This is actually the Callisto with its um, Callisto water with its atmosphere. But the other water worlds are slowly approaching Earth and are going to be crashing onto the surface and delivering this huge amount of water. Now, in one of the next videos, we're actually going to be talking about the origin of water on Earth. Because even today, we're not exactly sure where exactly our water came from. Now, it could have come the way that you see right here but if it did then we're not really sure what needed to be crashed into our planet for us to actually acquire this specific water that we have because the water on earth is actually compositionally a little bit different from water on other objects and specifically various uh, comets that we originally thought delivered the water turns out it wasn't really the comets so let's actually finish watching these collisions and basically cool down our earth and see what happened to it. So here we go. And anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Thank you for all your support and thank you for the support on Patreon as well. Thank you for subscribing. And if you still haven't, do consider subscribing because this is the channel where you get to learn things through video games and explore various space science and scientific concepts. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.